It's a great pleasure to be here and to see all of you enthusiastic young people. Greetings from a very cold, wet and rainy Denmark. And greetings from warm and sunny and sometimes rainy Malaysia. Yeah, I like the warm, I like the warm. Okay, I'm going to tell you maybe a little bit about my aspirations for the program um and you guys and then uh tell you a little bit more about the international program and why i'm here and then maybe you got some questions for me as well is that okay All right. okay okay so my aspirations for the eco schools program really uh, are the students you guys um at its best, the program is about inspiring and empowering children and youth. So to inspire them not to ignore inequality all around the world. From my point of view, climate change and caring about the environment are also about inequality. So if children and youth leave school each day with a better idea about what to do about the environment, then from my point of view, if they're not afraid of, of telling that information onwards, then you know my targets have been reached. For in a long-term situation, if these same children and youth from all over the world are learning to think creatively, and even more importantly, to, to critical thinking is an extraordinarily strong part of the Eco Schools program from my point of view. So um, if you're able to think critically and think creatively, then the program is, is, is becoming stronger. What I mean by that is that like, if you children and youth from Malaysia, if you find that something is not working in your schools, it can be anything. It can be from not turning the computer, people are not turning the computers off to a badly designed uh, waste paper basket or a badly designed tap that's always running, then you think positively, you think futuristically, you call a meeting and you design a better way of dealing with the problem. Um, so I think critical thinking is, is, is extremely important. <clears throat> And I hope that, that you and your teachers working together are able to think creatively as well about problems. Um, I've got many experiences through the, the Eco Schools program. Uh, for instance, we've got in Brazil, which is a huge country, there are only six schools that are actively working on the program. But those six schools are really making a difference in their small towns and villages. On the whole other end of the scale, we've got a country in Northern Ireland where every single school in the country is registered on the Eco Schools program. So that is absolutely fantastic. Oh, thank you. I let them know. They, uh, it's a small country, granted, but still 1,178 schools are actively working on the Eco Schools program there. Um, in Kenya, because of um, water saving activities that they did in schools, the villages and towns that they now live in, those schools, um, have have become have increased their water saving capacities as well they took the idea of erecting huge water tanks on the roofs of the schools they took that idea back to the village and erected water tanks on top of the roofs of the houses and the women and children who would normally be carrying water and collecting water now have more time to work in the gardens that they've also planted. They've planted vegetable gardens because of their water saving activities. I can tell you folks that you are some of 15 million students all around the world who are working on the Eco Schools program. Um, 
And it's not only in kindergartens and primary schools and secondary schools. In Ireland and Iceland and Russia, pupils who had been going to eco schools in their secondary schools, when they got to university, they said, well, where is the eco committee? And thankfully, the leaders of the universities in those countries said, OK, what's eco committee? What's eco schools? And they started running the program. So the result is that we now have 13 countries running eco universities. And so I hope that when you people leave your schools now that you'll also ask at the university you go to about the eco committee and about the eco schools program. Thank you, Grace. So um, I, I believe that just now you mentioned about uh, in Kenya how the efforts can be very localized. About how what? And about uh, how efforts, um, sustainability efforts can be very localized, which is one of the themes that we are uh, for our conference this year, uh, Local Agenda okay. 21. Okay, wonderful. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, Agenda 21 is, of course, a fantastic program, and it's actually the Eco Schools program is based on the Agenda 21 precepts from 1992 in Rio de Janeiro. Believe it or not, I only learned I only learned that last week at the NOM. <laughs> <laughs> I see. All right. So um, uh, the students are very glad that and the participants. Uh, I'm of course very glad that you have shared your aspirations with them. So um, in the email I've sent you, um, they have a few questions. Um, so then I would, uh, I was, if we have time, I was also sure. hoping that we could take a few questions from the audience um, and I'll let the students ask the questions themselves. Which one would you like to do first? Would you like to do the ones in the email? I'm easy, what a, whatever, whatever, whatever the students would like. Okay, would you like to do the Talk one? Talk to you. Or the live questions? Live? Yeah. All right. So I'm going to take a few questions from the participants now. Okay, lovely. All right. So who has the first question? I remember someone has a Hello, what's your name? Hello. Hi there, what's your name? Hello, my name is Mio. And my Hi Omar. there. Um, first and foremost, I would like to express first and foremost, I would like to express my pleasure in to see you. It's nice to see you. I think you have to hold the microphone really close to your lips. Uh, 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 um, <clears throat> my question is quite we have witnessed many destructive activities by humans which had and still is bringing great harm to the earth, such as deforestation and open burning. These activities have been going on for a very long time now and are nowhere near stopping. Now, we are facing another problem which does not only cost the lives of humans but also the lives of plants, trees and animals. The problem which I'm referring to is war. Many countries are now at war and this is causing the destruction of our ecosystem. Now, my question is, how, in your opinion, do we citizens of the earth change the mindset of these people? Okay, I truly don't believe that anybody can change somebody else's mindset. So the only way I could, the only realistic way to answer your question is to act. By acting, by showing your actions, then 
more people see the way we should behave and so on and so forth and then they might change but but people have to change themselves i can't change you you can't change me i can change myself by working hard at it and so i truly believe that if you act the way you believe you should act properly then more then the ripple effect will will occur and more and more people will act the the right way um with re i mean for instance you can you can sign up you know there are lots of avas for instance there are lots of um organizations that are working uh, for the earth um i would s and we're all um always too busy with emails and we receive far too many but i'm a member of us i'm a member of some of us i'm a member of those type of organizations and i do sign the petitions and i do send them to our politicians and i do take the time to say we can actually change the world if we act if we march if we if we if we take actions make actions um, so I would encourage you to do that. I would encourage you to to sign up for for um, with organisations like Greenpeace, like like uh, WWF. Of course, they've got some fantastic um, um, uh, campaigns going. Um, and sign up and and do what you can and be valuable about what you're doing. And hopefully, other people will copy you eventually. Does that make any sense? Thank you very much. You're welcome. Thank you. Thank you, Bryn, and thank you, Neil, for the question. Can I ask another two more questions? Okay. Can I ask this lady in this room? Hi there, good to see you. Good to see you too. Uh, my name is Clarinda, and I'm just going to ask you one question. Okay. Um, first one, um, how we as students do something to stop the, the differentiation? Okay, sorry, I didn't hear. I heard incident and education. <laughs> oh, sorry. I'm How we as students then something stops the deforestation. Deforestation, yeah. How? Sorry. Yes, that. Um. How? Do how do we stop it? How to stop deforestation? I suppose is it? No. Yes. Yes. As a student. Oh. What yes. Okay. Okay, okay, right, wow, woo, plant more trees, plant more trees, plant more trees. Um, there's, there's, um, yeah, we, we do have a program called LEAF, Learning About Forest, which is one of the fee, um, uh, one of the other fee programs. Eco Schools is one of five programs that fee run. And as we've heard a million times, the time to plant a tree was 20 years ago, but the other time is right now. Um, if there are any campaigns happening in your country um, regarding deforestation, then by all means sign up, make yourself valuable again. Um, deforestation is a huge problem all over the world. Um, you know, unfortunately, some hamburger companies are using those, uh, are, 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 are pulling down those trees and, and, you know, so don't support hamburger companies. You know, you've got to act where your mouth is as well. Um, what else can I say? I don't plant more trees. <laughs> Sorry, do you have any ideas? How do you think? What have you been doing? Deforestation is a bigger um, problem in Malaysia than it is here in Denmark. 
I'll probably start at school and do more campaigns. Yeah, great. Campaigning is always good. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> okay. Thank you. Thank you. I'm I'm cool. I'm happy to to be stay here as long as you want me here. All right. Would you like to pick up um, which group? Uh, one one audience for the question. Okay. So I'm going right. to ask some questions. Um, some of them might ask their questions in Bahasa, so I will translate it for them. Okay. All right. Lovely. All right. Okay. Introduce yourself and then ask your questions. Good. Saya ingin bertanya, bagaimana kita dapat meramalkan perubahan iklim sementara kita tidak dapat meramalkan cuaca? Oh, okay. So, um, her question is, how do you predict climate change when um, when we can't predict, uh, predict the weather. <laughs> this is a great huge uh, mistake that a lot of people make about the weather and climate change. Nobody wants to predict climate change. Climate change is much more about um, the amount of CO2 in the atmosphere and it's very, very straightforward and simple and easy for them to measure the amount of CO2 that's in the atmosphere and how it's increasing day by day, year by year, unfortunately. So, the modern technology is quite clear on, on climate change and quite clear on, on, on how to measure it. It's happening, it's here, and we've really got to prevent it by doing everything we can, by keeping fossil fuels in the ground. Thank you, Britt. You're welcome. Thanks, Britt. All right. You're welcome. All right. Um, 
Good boy, good boy. Hello. Uh, Hello there, nice Ashley. to see you. Hi there. Uh, my question is, so far, Echo schools have reached out to 58 countries as well as that. So what efforts can be carried out to reach out to more countries? Yeah, um, you know, of course it would be fantastic if, if, if EcoSchools was not just in 58 countries, but if it was in 193. But that's maybe not realistic for now. Of course, it would be great that the program expands, but my aspirations would be that even if it's in one school, that one school is running the program properly and giving the students as much power as possible to do the right thing and to and and to lead um not only in the schools but also in their at home in their families and in the greater community so for me it's more about embedding the real essence of the program into schools than it is having the whole world on board um of course I know that eventually almost all countries will come on board, but it's, it's, that is not the most important thing for me right now. What I would say, if, if, if I could choose, I would love to have more design schools on board so that, um, so that students could design futuristically and, and, and have inbuilt sustainability in every product that we use. That would be my aspiration rather than including the whole world. Though eventually, eco-schools will be in the whole world. Thank you. You're welcome. Hi. Hi there. You can call me Nasroy. Uh, okay. I, I would like to ask you one question. Uh, what initiative, initiative that should be taken if campaigns that are being carried out do not achieve this objective? Uh, sorry, what initiatives are being carried out? Uh, what initiatives that should Okay, I can hear what initiatives that are being carried out, and I missed the middle piece, which is what the question is about, I think. Well, what initiatives that should be taken if campaigns that are being carried out do not achieve this objective? I'm sorry, Jesse. I I'm, I simply don't hear it. Okay. What initiative that should be taken if campaigns that are being carried out do not achieve this objective? Well, again, I think the most important initiative, we can, we can turn off our computers and we can turn off lights and we can save as much energy and when there's much fuel and so on and so forth. But the, uh, from the last question, the earth is still heating up. So the most important thing for me is to keep fossil fuels in the ground. And one of the questions that, that, that I received was, you know, what might be the best campaign that I've heard about? And for me, that initiative, which is called Keep It In The Ground, do you know of it? Have you heard of it? It's, it's a campaign called Keep It In The Ground. And okay, but it, it, that, that to me is a very important one. It's run by the Guardian newspaper in London. You can Google the Guardian newspaper and they're very involved in, 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 um, in environmental cases. So it's, it's keep fossil fuels in the ground. And that's the most important thing. Basically, do not 
dig more coal out of the ground, do not pump more oil out of the ground. And that means that we have to have more and more and more renewable energies. So that's my one. Keep it in the ground. That's the initiative that's most important for me. That's it. Thank you. All right, Brit, just two more questions. Um, okay. Hi, I'm Asmin. As Hi, know, Asmin. Now, yes. As you know, right now, the 21st United Nations climate change is still going on until 11th December. So, what's your expectations or hopes for the outcome of this conference? The COP21 conference. Is it, yeah? Yes. Um, yes. What, what, okay. What well, total agreement with all nations to save the earth, to get rid of climate change by, um, by helping developing nations. I really, really, really do believe that, that th there is a lot of inequality in, 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 with regard to climate change. So the best ever outcome would be that all nations sign the agreement and that the rich nations agree to help the less rich nations with regard to achieving uh, renewable energies all around the world. At the moment, they're, they're, um, they've got a 45-page agreement, but within that 45-page agreements are many, many, many clauses or sentences in brackets that um, the parties are not able to agree on. But I think definitely that the outcome will be a lot more usable and a lot more... Um, 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 uh, ah, sorry, a lot more um, optimistic and a lot more practical than what was achieved uh, five years ago or what was not achieved five years ago. I think it's a much, much, much more important um, um, issue now than it was five years ago. So I'm optimistic. All right. Thank you, Brit. Thank you for your question. Thank you for your question. All right, last question. Okay. Hello, hello there. My name is Graham. Hi, Grant. I'd like to ask, um, over there in Denmark, there are probably different strategies to to fight against climate change and to sort of make more eco-friendly results. Do you think there are any other, any practices over there that can be applied over here? Yeah, fine. Um, I think so. Uh, I think that a lot of people here are very active. I don't know if you, any of you were on the climate march on the 29th of November, but here in Copenhagen, there were about 6,000 people marching. Um, we were, I was part of it, and there were lots of young people, and that was encouraging to see. So I think get out and march, that always, always, always helps. The other thing is that here in Denmark, um, since the 1970s, when the first energy um, stri uh, strikes happened, uh, Denmark invested an awful lot of money in research and development into wind energy. So, so Denmark are leaders in the world in making windmills and applying wind, wind energy to, uh, to the grid and renewable energies for, for in the form of wind. So probably, I don't know again uh, how much you, do, you have developed wind energy in Malaysia, but I definitely think that, that um, Denmark would be able to, to help there or advise. Um, if, if you could talk to your government and tell them, please, that they need more renewable energies. That's a joke. I, uh, also, are there any ways to further popularize the Eco Schools program? Probably. Um, I would love to hear if you have any ideas about how to do so. Um, you know, we've got little tattoos. I should have a picture of it. 
and uh, it's lots of children around the world sometimes put the tattoos with eco schools on their faces that's a kind of a popularistic type of way of doing it there are some pictures on our facebook of that on our facebook page um i think that there are you know we we, we also want to work it, we we're not in competition with anybody at all so there are lots and lots of good other good green schools programs out there all around the world. So we'd love to speak more to those people and to work with the other um, programs that are out there. Thank you. All right, thank you. Thank you, thank you so much, Bridge, for your answers and thank you so much for spending time with us. So um, you're, we you're welcome. Can I just also say thank you, Jesse, and thank you, WWF, for uh, uh, Malaysia, for all the wonderful work you're doing with Eco Schools and the other programs. Thank you. Um, and just to just wanted you to know that we are doing the climate march in, uh, in solidarity with France tomorrow morning. So we will send Great. pictures. Yeah. Okay, lovely. Good. Yeah. Good, good, good. Thank you, Eco Schools. Thank you. All right. So before we end this um, session, this broadcast, I would just want to ask if anybody would like to come over here and say goodbye to Britt and thank you for her time. All right. Thank you so much, Britt. Thank you. Bye bye. Have a wonderful conference. Enjoy the rest of it. Bye bye. Enjoy the conference. Great seeing you. Take care. Bye bye. Bye bye.